Hey guys, here are the Vampire Diaries, Season 8, Episode 6, detoured on some random backwards path to hell, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, as you guys know, I really have been enjoying this season so far, and this episode, while I thought this episode was really great, then the ending happened, and I gotta say that while I do like the direction we're taking, I do think that we're starting to write the show in circles a little bit, but let's just get into this episode because I definitely do want to talk about it, I thought there was some really good stuff that went on in this episode, um... But we start off with Caroline and Alaric. There are police combing their property and sharing information and photos of their missing twins, Josie and Lizzie, and Celine and her sister, Sybil. And after Matt informs them that their nanny is actually a siren, now they know that they can't trust her. And I like that this is over. I like that there's no more mystery of can we trust her. Like, now they know they can't trust her. So Alaric calls Celine, who obviously he's furious with, who refused to tell him where they are nor let him talk to the girls. And Celine tells him they are his girls are special and they need special care, so the less he knows, the better. And uh, Alaric agrees with her, tells her he doesn't care about her plans because they're never going to happen, and he tells her that he will hunt her down and kill her and says to her after all the time she has spent with him in his home, how could she miss how how could she miss just how far he would go to protect his children because you know, she's seen how much he cares about, you know, his daughters. He will do anything to protect them and that was my favorite part of this episode, seeing how much Caroline and Alaric, what they will do for their kids, I definitely really did like that. And he continues to tell her that he is not coming for her, he's coming for his kids, and warns that the longer they run, the more he's going to hurt her, and he will do what he can to go after her. And I really do believe Alaric when he's saying that, I mean, in the fury, he will definitely go after them, and... Damon arrives at the diner with Sybil on his arm. Sybil tells Celine what a big family reunion she has brought on her, while Damon greets the twins, asking if they remember him, and I thought that was a really good way to start things off. Obviously, you can tell that Damon has some sort of plan of his own, but you don't really know what it is. But Bonnie's then waking up beside Enzo, and uh, bliss they're blissfully unaware of what has happened to uh, her friend's children, which I did really like this scene. I like that for once, they're actually genuinely happy. But then as they're dressing, Bonnie and Enzo's phones start going off. Bonnie's calls are all from Caroline, but Enzo's call is from Damon. As he answers, there was a screeching sound that paralyzes him, so that was pretty crazy to see. And... Uh, Seven then meets up with Caroline, is ready to go with her and Alaric to find the twins, but she tells him not to come, that her and Alaric can handle it. She asks him to stay with Matt and work with the police, and Caroline says that Damon is with the twins, and Stefan needs to stay back because if Damon got between her and her children, she is going to kill him, and she really does mean it when she says that. So, she hands back her engagement ring, tells him to him, until everything is over, there is no us, it's only her, her kids, and their father. And I get it, I really do. I mean, her kids are what matter to her the most, and even though she wants to get married, until she finds her kids, nothing else can happen. And uh, she says they are counting on her. And when it comes to Dame, she cannot make any more compromises. So you can tell she definitely is very determined, and we definitely see that throughout this episode. So Lark interrupts him, says that Matt has a trace on their call, and says that they are close to Oakwood. Stefan is left standing there, and at the diner, the twins are sleeping while Sybil eats bacon. And Damon keeps staring at Celine. She asks him why he's doing it, and he asks her, how do you go from Island Cannibal to Naughty Mary Poppins? And Sybil laughs. But Celine tells him he looks like a lapdog under the control of a psychopath. Sybil is not very kind to Celine, especially since she was stuck in that vault since 1883. And Celine attempts to defend her actions, saying that the armory was after her and she needed to blend it. And Sybil's animosity grows. She tells her how she can see how hard she worked to rescue her. And I like the tension between these two. I really do. I think it adds something here. And Damon wants to know why the sirens need a couple three-year-olds. And uh, we essentially find out that C Celine says that they are freaks of nature, Siphon twins, who share a psychic link, and Sybil explains they were not much older when they met the devil, that being Cade. So Sybil reveals that Celine wants to offer them up to Cade, and Damon's obviously shocked about this. The fact that he, they want to replace three-year-old twins with Sybil and Celine is absurd to think about, and I like that Damon isn't actually okay. Like, he obviously is not okay with this, because... You know, they're three-year-old girls, obviously. So, Stevan looks over the map with, Matt, with uh, Matt, and they try to determine where they are going. Bonnie bursts in with Enzo, begging for their help. Enzo's fighting Sybil, who's inside his head, clearly trying to get him back into her head and get her back under his control. But Bonnie suggests Stefan tries to get into his head. Enzo agrees, and Stevan sees Sybil punishing him for pulling out his organs one by one. Enzo refuses to go back to her, and she says she isn't there to win him back. She's just there for the screams. So Stevan lets go. Bonnie demands to know what he saw. He tells Matt to pull up all the diamonds up in Oakwood that he just figured out where Sybil is, and she has no clue that they, of course, are onto her. So Celine explains that she's not going to 
offer the girls up right away, but she would like to offer them as their replacements. So, Damon asks her to explain. She continues to tell them that if they find suitable replacements, Cade will, in fact, free them, which is everything that they want. They really do want to be freed, and... Just as she finishes her sentences, everyone's phone starts buzzing in the diner, and Amber Alert's been issued, and that was actually a pretty good scene, seeing, you know, how much they go off, because, yeah, when so many phones go off, it's very loud, and Damon says Celine's plan needs a little tweaking. Celine stands up, begins to hum, all the patrons in the diner freeze up, and Caroline tells Alaric that Stefan will find the girls somehow. He tells her that if that were true, Stefan would be driving and she would still be wearing his ring. So, I do like the way that Alaric is telling her, look, maybe Stefan doesn't care as much, and, Car and you know, does he care as much about the girls as Caroline does, but Caroline and Alaric then arrive at the diner and it's empty. Alaric tells him to continue torturing Enzo because the really the only thing that's working, and uh, Damon asks if, if they are driving, why the Grim Reaper want the Wonder Twins instead of them, and Celine says she spent a, uh, over a century finding the perfect sacrifice, and their age is a plus, so Celine blabs as they need to be supernatural and be willing to serve Kate as her own free will, she insists the twins will trust her, and she can train them, and if Kate accepts them, they will be free and won't go to hell, so we basically are seeing why they need them and what that's all about. So Damon thought that they would automatically go to hell, and Celine explains that if they find the right substitute, they don't have to go to hell, which again, I find very interesting. I like the way that they are, in fact, building on this whole mythology and things like that, and Celine explains if you have, if you, that basically they hit a police block, and at first they're able to hide the twins, but Lizzie doesn't want to sleep anymore. She burns Sybil, and the cop opens the van door again. Sybil attacks him. Damon takes control. Celine asks, why are they stopping there? He says that her plan is not working, so they need to call Kate themselves and do it. Sybil tells them that they need that he, they need a body of water and a couple of human bodies. And after Celine refused to tell him, Celine says that they were not going to do it because the twins won't be ready for at least another decade. Now is just not the time to start with them. They're not going to be ready. So Damon says they are not going to wait. They're going to summon him to at least present their offer and... Steven doesn't want to torture Enzo anymore, we see, but Bonnie urges him on, but to be gentle. Matt calls Alaric and tells him that Steven is still working on Enzo, and while they are at this crime scene, the bodies Damon just killed, Sybil and Damon are at the pool where he confronts Sybil on the differences between her and Celine's version of Cade, and Sybil says that she was dead, but Cade went inside her and heard her screams for life, which made her agree to anything, including slavery and hell, so... She's very much under Cade's control, and I like seeing that Cade is really like the mastermind behind all this. And Damon says he has another deal in mind, but he's going to need her help to pull it off. Steven is in Enzo's mind as he begs Sybil in his subconscious to tell him where the girl, where the kids are. She says that he is a dead man. She begins the medical saw. Steven finally jumps into Enzo's subconscious mind. Sybil is delighted to see him, and Sybil tells Steven that if he comes alone, she will let Enzo go, and Enzo tells him not to trust her. So she says that Enzo's right, but Damon and her have an offer that he won't be able to to refuse, and Matt then stays by Bonnie as she takes care of Enzo, tells her that he gave Steven the address in the motel they're at, and Bonnie says she loves Enzo and will not lose him, and Matt says that that is good. Enzo fought hard to be with her and escaped, and Bonnie says she isn't sure if she escaped really, and Matt says that he will because he's a tough bastard. Enzo wakes up, says he isn't sure who he should kiss first, and Caroline and Alaric then uh, arrive at the motel. They call Matt, saying no one is there. Steven arrives at a different motel where he gets a call from Caroline, who says he has no right to cut them out of all this, and Steven tells her that he has every right to be involved, that she is becoming his wife, and Alaric is his friend, that he wants to make everything right, and they start fighting. He tells her that this once this is over, he's taking the girls and leaving. She says he can't take their kids. He says that they were his and Joe's kids and not hers, and Alaric really does have a point there. I mean, he's just let her take care of her kids. You know, th these are his kids, uh, they're not really hers, and even though she spends so much time with them, they really are his kids, and the only reason that he let her spend time with them is because she was the one that gave birth to them, and it's very sad to see, but I did like that Alaric was genuinely serious. I mean, it makes sense, too. It's kind of like a mad situation where he doesn't want them to be immortal. He doesn't want them to have this life. He doesn't want them to have to live in Mystic Falls because... Really, no human should have to live in Mystic Falls, but of course, you know, they're not humans, so that's the one thing that he's not really thinking through, is that really, uh, Josie and Lizzie are not humans, and that's kind of why they need to be in Mystic Falls. So Selena teaching the girls how to hum, and when they continue the chant, the pool starts on fire. Damon's worried that Steven isn't there yet, but Sybil tells him he is there, but she wanted him to have a welcome committee first. Damon figures out that Sybil sirened every person in the hotel to kill Steven to remind him how dark he really is. Damon says that he needs him alive, and Sybil says that Cade likes him dark, and Steven's gonna, going to be, be is being beaten to death. 
Damon appears, asks him which road he's going to take. He also advises him to kill the last man before he kills him. Steven gets knocked out, and meanwhile, Kate arrives at the pool when Celine calls him. The man is crushing Steven's insides with a broken baseball bat. Kind of a hard scene to watch, but Steven asks Damon why he's doing this. He tells Steven he can help save the twins, but first things first, Steven kills the man and says, we'll leave a mark in his soul, but he has to get out of hell of, out of out hell." free card in his pocket. So Steven's shocked but orders Damon to take him to the girls. Damon tells him he needs to agree to some terms first and Cade listens to Celine's proposition and is kind of intrigued. One of the girls says that Celine said Cade's a nice man. He laughs. He tells him with time and guidance that they could become anything. Sybil jumps in, says that she has another offer, which are two brothers, two of history's most prolific killers, two powerful immoral vampires, and Cade would be trading up if he takes the brothers and release them. So essentially... <clears throat> Celine is go S Sybil is trying to offer up the Salvatore brothers and not the girls. And Steven runs in the room, agrees that he will do it. And Steven brings the girls out to their parents. So he does, in fact, agree that they're going to, I guess, be slaves of Cade, basically, which is very interesting. But uh, he says back, he stays back from all of them. Caroline looks at Steven, but no one really speaks. Enzo tells Bonnie he's ready. Bonnie tells him that she appreciates how hard he fought to come back to her, but asks him how he kept fighting while after Damon broke. And Enzo was an orphan who was also who was always abandoned, lived with a man who beat him for centuries, and that hardened his mind until he was made of stone. And Bonnie says that he's kind and loving, and he says it's all thanks to her. All their jerseys he kept a secret from the world, a shred of faith. He said that nothing could possibly be that cruel to let him suffer so much and die without knowing true love. And Bonnie says that basically she is an angel. He tells her that she is whole, his whole damn world, and they kiss. And it was a really sweet scene, actually. I really do like seeing Bonnie and Enzo, uh, things working out between them. I like seeing him, you know, genuinely care that things go well for them. I, I definitely really did like that. I'm worried that things aren't going to go well, because whenever a couple's happy in the show, they don't stay happy. But I do like where Bonnie and Enzo are headed right now. So Caroline and Alaric bring the kids to the hospital, says that they will bring them home in the morning. He apologized for all the words he said to her. He said that she said that he is right. Genetically, they are not his kids, but she did in fact give birth to him. She raised them and loved them. When they went missing, she was broken inside. She tells him to never throw that in her face again, and Alaric says he doesn't know how to raise the girls. Caroline says for right now, he needs to take them and keep them safe and away from her until the darkness and this is all over, because just right now, it's not safe to have them there. So I did like that they had an agreement there with that. So Steven's at home when Caroline apologized for cutting him off like that. She says that they are partners and should be making decisions together. She puts his ring back on and tells Steven that she loves him, but she says she has a really bad feeling about what he had to do to get her daughters back. And she admits that she told him to do whatever it takes to get her kids back, so what did it take? And Steven tells her everything, that he gave Damon what he promised him, he gave him his immortal soul to Cade. So he has to serve Cade like the Sirens did and deliver the darkest souls to hell so he doesn't end up there himself. So Damon is essentially immortal now, and Caroline pleads that there has to be a way out of this that he promised her a June wedding. He apologizes, but she is in denial and says that he will be staying at the end of that aisle waiting for her, and we don't know if it's actually going to come true. So I really do like the fact that Caroline right now still believes that these two are going to get married, but I think we're starting to see that that wedding is definitely most likely not going to happen. But Steven tells her that their last day is tomorrow. She says why. He said his one condition was that he got to spend his last 24 hours with her, so I do like that things are going well there, but definitely it seems like, you know, pretty soon he's going to have to leave her to go to Cade. So Celine tells Sybil that she could have told her the scheme, but Sybil said it was more fun to watch her and Barris was all in front of Cade. Celine says she doesn't care, she's done. Sybil says she read the fine print and they are not free. Sybil's free because Cade accepted her better offer, and Celine is not free because Cade didn't accept her proposal. So... Celine cries, asks Sybil how she could cut her out of the agreement. Sybil says it is finally paid back for being stuck in that vault for centuries, and Sybil says that she has to stay alive and keep her powers, admitting that the game isn't over yet, and I like the way this is going. I like that Sybil is the one that has the more power. You know, Sybil's the one we've been more introduced to, and I like that Celine still isn't free yet, so I'm interested in seeing really where that's going to go. So Matt then asks Alaric what he wants him to do with all this stuff, and this was a very interesting ending. Alaric says he will take care of it. Alaric thanks Matt, saying he may be the only sane voice in their crazy world. Matt admits that even he has a threshold of how much pain he can see his friends, his friends go through before he wants to fight back, and Damon's in at the bar asking for a refill, but he gets shot in the back by Matt, which which is, again, everything that Matt's want to do. He's wanted to enact revenge on Damon since he found that Damon killed Tyler, and 
When Damon uh, turns to Matt, Alaric shoots him again. Alaric thanks Damon for showing up because he's been wanting to kill someone all day. Alaric starts kicking Damon, says that his kids can't be in danger anymore, and as long as Damon's alive, his kids are in danger. And Alaric continues to beat him when Matt stops him, tells him to just finish him. He grabs a dagger, says this is for Tyler, stabs him, and Damon turns gray, and he thinks that he killed him. But as we know, now that Damon is immortal, he can't be killed. And that is the way this episode ends. Very anticlimactic overall, but let's just get in this episode and where I think we're going to go after this so this episode was a little bit frustrating me. I think it started off really strong with a really nice rescue mission with, you know, uh, Caroline Alaric trying to free Lizzie and Josie. I do think it was a little bit quick the way they were freed, but I do think it's interesting where we're headed with Damon and uh, Stefan having to serve to Cade. But we've seen this a million times before with these two having to sacrifice themselves, with Stefan, you know, sacrificing himself for his family and giving up a life that he wanted. We've seen this so many times before, and I really feel like we're just kind of writing and circles here, and that's kind of the thing that uh, kind of upset me, but the thing that pissed me off the most is that if Damon was not immortal and was not being served to Cade, he could be dead right now. We could have Damon Salvatore dead right now. Imagine how shocking that would be. Just imagine if, if he was actually killed by Alaric and that he wasn't immortal. Just imagine how shocking that could have been. But of course, because of the fact that uh, that isn't the case, and that he is in fact immortal, and that he is in fact going to come back, now it's just anticlimactic. There really was no point to kill him. If anything, I think Alaric should have been killed by Damon, or Matt should have been killed, and that would have been generally shocking. Not just killing Damon, and no, we can't kill him because he's immortal. That's not how a final season should work. It should be a genuine death, and I don't know why they had to end it like that. It just felt kind of strange that they did that. I get that Alaric think that, uh, you know, Lark and Matt think that, you know, they've now enacted revenge, and they've finally gotten rid of Damon, but of course they haven't, and that's kind of pissed me off the way that's going to go. I really do feel bad for Caroline. You can tell she genuinely does want this June wedding. She genuinely does care about Stefan, but she doesn't really understand that, you know, she might not get Stefan as much as she thinks she's going to, and it's very sad to see. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with that. Uh, Celine is not free, as we know, but Sybil is, and I don't know how long this is going to last, but I do like that they're staying on the show. I don't want them to get rid of Celine and Sybil. I've liked their characters. I think they both have given really good performances, and I think they actually have added not a lot to this season, but definitely their stuff I found very interesting. All their psychological stuff that's going on that I definitely really appreciated. And then finally, Enzo. I like that right now, Bonnie and Enzo, things seem to be good between them. I don't think it's going to stay that way, but I think right now things are going to be okay. But honestly, I don't really know where we're going over the rest of the season. I know it's the mid-season finale next week. Uh, personally, I don't know why we need 16 episodes now. I was thinking we needed it, but after this episode, I don't really know why we need it. I feel like 10 episodes or 13 episodes would have been a much better solution. I mean, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend this season is doing 13. Why couldn't the Vampire Diaries do 13? I don't know why we're doing 16 episodes. Just right now, it doesn't seem like we need it. Maybe they'll get me on board next week, but as it as it is right now, I really don't know where the season is headed. I really don't know why we needed 16 episodes, but either way, guys, I am looking forward to the mid-season finale next week. I don't know where we're headed. I don't know what's really going to happen, but we'll have to see what's going to happen there, but that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys thought this episode overall. Loved your thoughts on it. Do you agree that we're writing in circles? I really do feel that we've seen a lot of this before, and I kind of just want to see something new here, but I will see you guys in the next video, which will be for a movie review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.